Welcome to Bella in Your Business. My name is Bella Vasta, and today I've got a delight for you. From the moment I met Rebecca, I was excited. Um, she is just someone who you want to be your gal pal, uh, but not only that, but incredibly knowledgeable. Rebecca Radice is the founder of Radiant LA, a digital marketing training and development company. She's an international keynote speaker, a woman after my own heart, creating the prep performance model and the author of Social Media Mastery, a comprehensive guide of strategic growth. With over 20 years experience, Rebecca has trained thousands of growth-driven leaders on her prep performance method. Through these four steps processes, uh, entrepreneurs and enterprises get the skills, systems, and processes necessary to improve social media engagement, engage quality leads, and turn conversations into convert conversations into conversions. I had to read that twice and increase revenue. Without further ado, welcome, Rebecca. Thank you for being here. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. Anytime I get to chat with you. <laughs> so we have a whole audience full of pet sitters and dog walkers um, that are just, you know, the, the industry is exploding and they are scaling their businesses as rapid rates. We are going from easily 100,000 all the way up to uh, like a seven figure business and they are just, you know, really trying to separate and differentiate themselves. And I'm excited to have you on today because we don't get to talk too much about branding and how um, it really changes on social media because I think we're just all trying to not be afraid of social media, let yeah. alone, you know, actually portray the same type of brand out there. So how is it, what's the difference between like social media, social selling and social networking? Let's start with that basic foundation. Yeah, no, that's a, it's a great question. And I love your audience and what you're doing. And I can totally attest to the growth. I, I live in the LA area. And so we have dog walkers everywhere where whether you know you work at the studios because I'm right around the corner from you know Disney Warner Brothers and and a lot of people just can't get away uh -huh. and it's such a wonderful feeling to know as uh, a chihuahua mama myself that you've got somebody coming in that you totally trust that understands your pets understands the environment and can really reduce down that stress too for us that's such a big piece of it they're high stress dogs they don't like to be left alone so i think yeah. it's just such a wonderful thing that we have the ability i don't remember another time in history where you know we had people like that that could yeah. take that 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 stress out of our lives too of oh crap i can't run home for lunch what am i going to do you know and have somebody come in and take care of that that part of your family yeah. Yeah. It really just started in the late nineties and the first wave, um, even when I got in the industry in like 2002, we were still trying to educate everybody, but, mm -hmm. um, the rapid rate, I believe, uh, you know, Rover and WAG have kind of come into the scene and they've spent billions of dollars on advertising. So wow. sorry, billions of dollars on advertising and have really, really helped educate the world that, you know, people can come in and care for your pets. So as such, everything's just getting really saturated and everybody is a pet sitter now or a dog walker. And, um, and so it's, it's pretty hard, you know, online because, uh, we often get, um, devalued. Um, because mm. I think sometimes we don't do a good job of explaining that professional level of it all. Yeah. So, yeah, well, and, 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 and to your question, it, you know, just the different ways that we're using social media, yeah. you really can. You, you can elevate awareness around your brand. Uh, you can elevate awareness around the whole pet sitting industry where yeah. it, a lot of people still are unaware that that's a thing. <laughs> that that's, uh, yeah, that that's a, right. a huge booming industry. And so I think education, uh, first and foremost, is a terrific way to use social media because social media is creating that conversation. Uh -huh. So it's conversations like you and I are having on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. And then we're able to take that into a conversation like this. So 
for that pet sitter that maybe is running a Facebook page or has a, a Twitter account or Instagram and they're using it to create awareness, it's it's just starting with a conversation. So a lot of times it's it's talking about what are those frequently asked questions? What do people need to know to be able to hire you to do what you do? What are their fears? What are their concerns? What keeps them from pulling the trigger, from picking up the phone and calling you or for re from reaching out? So answer those things using social media. And when you do, then you can start to naturally move them into that social sales opportunity where they are. They are ready and willing to hire you because A, you've built up credibility, you've created authority within the space because you're educating, you're giving your, your ideas away, yeah. but you're also explaining to them what your thought process is, um, how you care for the animals, what's most important to you. So you're stripping away all of those maybe myths or misconceptions or those concerns that we all have as animal owners, and you are creating a natural progression instead of that push-pull we tend to feel with social media, which we're pushing out our content, and then we feel like we got to pull those people over to us, and we know that doesn't work. Right, right, right. I love it. And um, I think you could speak a little bit on this too. It's having that journalistic mind almost when you are going about your day or things come across your desk or you hang up the phone from that person who you just helped solve, like save the day for. They, their grandmother passed away and you have to, you know, they need a pet sitter. They're not sure who to trust. It's, it's turning real life examples into those those stories with it using a journalistic mind to tell those stories on your social media so that it isn't that push and pull that you got you were just talking about yeah and and what a terrific example too because that situation is happening every single day yeah. in so many different ways where we do have uh, those moments of crisis or those moments where I got to find somebody and who are we going to look to? We're going to look to the people that are telling those stories, that are making their business relatable to us right. and that have really put that emotion into uh, your business. So yeah, there's stuff happening every single day. I would make sure you have a way to create uh, or capture those moments. So as you're running around, as you're having those conversations, have a note-taking app where yeah. you are categorizing those, those things. So they could be questions. They could be your exact solutions. They could be fears, concerns, whatever that category might be. And just keep a running catalog. And then get those into a calendar type system where if you're creating content actively, for your business every single day. Think about what are the buckets of content that you're going to share every day. So yeah. you could have three different buckets. You know, one is educational, one is inspirational, one is motivational, whatever your content buckets look like, add, start to drop those ideas into that and then plug them into a calendar. So for example, you might share educational content on Mondays. You might share inspirational content on Tuesdays. You might share a how-to on, on Wednesdays, what to do if your dog is choking, you know, things like that. So just think about what it is. What are those stories that you want to impart? What is that, that key takeaway you want them to get out of every piece of content that you share? And then how are you going to make that easy on yourself? So how are you going to create a system and a process that takes a lot of the heavy lifting off of you? So it's getting it into a calendar so that you know you're a morning person, you're going to get out of bed, you're going to create that content every single day, and then you know what system and, and tool you're going to put it into to get automation involved too so you're consistent. I love that. And I think uh, those buckets that you talked about really help take away the anxiety of what do I post? So yes. if you make a conscious effort and you say, you know, I have these five topics and I'm going to post about three topics a week, you know, take that pressure off yourself so that you're just more conscious as you're going through your day. Maybe you give a dog a treat with your thumb tucked in so that your fingers don't get 
you know, nipped off. And you're <laughs> like, oh, wow, yeah, that is something I do. I never really thought about it, but that might be something you can put in a did you know bucket, you know? Right. So I want you guys to really think about and write down some ideas. Pause this podcast right now if you can and, and think about some some common themes. The cool thing about this, and this is going to move into our next thing. I want to find out how we can find new customers for our business with social media. And I would assume that one of those buckets could very well be like, a, I want more customers. So I want to create a bucket that shows value of what we do or what we do maybe. Right. What do you think, right. Rebecca? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I immediately think of the Dodo videos. Uh-huh. Which- are so fantastic. Um, and just what a great job they do in raising awareness around a, a lot of different aspects of animals' lives. Yeah. And you could do the same exact thing. So you want new customers that are going to hire you to come into their home and maybe uh, you focus, you know, you're specialized in larger breed dogs, for example. So one of those buckets could be all of those things you just you were talking about how to, you know, feed a yep. larger breed dog without right. getting your fingers nipped off. <laughs> <laughs> how to how to get them to go to the bathroom in the rain? Something yeah. I just dealt with last week. You know, just silly totally. little things that sound silly, but really mean a lot right. to your target audience. So it really does go down to uh, getting into the head and the heart of your audience. You know, what is going to bring them over to your social channels? What's going to interest them enough that they're going to want to stick around? But more than that, what is it that's going to want them to learn more about you? What's going to make them want to go from uh, just kind of perusing your feed to maybe bouncing over to your website and reading through your blog or checking out more of your videos or actually contacting you. So you also want to think about that journey that your audience is on, where in that journey they're meeting you. So if they're meeting you for the first time on Facebook, Mm -hmm. okay, what are they going to need to know about you? What are they going to need to hear from you that is going to pique their curiosity or give them enough of a a comfort or a calm around your business that they do want to learn more? So put yourself in the shoes Uh of your audience too, as you're starting to get to know your audience and then really get involved in the conversation. You know, the beauty in being able to find our customers on social media is they're out there having conversations about you, what you do right now. They're talking Mm -hmm. about their animals. They're talking about their day-to-day lives. They're talking Mm -hmm. about the fact that, you know, their their cat has kidney disease and what in the world, you know, are they going to do when they're out of town and who's going to care for that animal and who's going to understand, you know, those special, uh, that specialty or their needs. So they're having those conversations. You just need to make sure that you're out there in the community actually listening and then you're creating content, sharing content that solves those particular problems. That was fantastic. So what I hear is that people are already having these conversations and it's our duty to kind of join the conversation or be a resource for the conversation or be able to be that attractive that they're having this conversation and then, oh, look, I just found this Kidney special. I don't know. <laughs> Something, right? Yes, exa- exactly. I, it's, you know, you mentioned that it can be very hard mm-hmm. to put yourself out there. And yeah. especially when we're tooting our own horn, right? Mm-hmm. When we're talking about what we do. And th- this way, you know, when you're talking about what you do, your passion shines through, yeah. but also you're showing how knowledgeable you are in that mm-hmm. area. So you can't be afraid to share the those day-to-day stories of, you know, guys, I just, I, I got such a great opportunity yesterday, had the chance to, you know, sit in three different dogs. And it, here was something that happened within that, that moment yep. that you know, every other pet owner is going to relate to. So don't yeah. be afraid to tell those stories, to expose a little bit of your day-to-day, because that's yep. what people love too, is to go behind the scenes with you, see what you do do, um, especially in, 
dropping my mic here, um, <laughs> especially in areas where, um, you know, you can get out, you can walk around, you can yeah. take people with you. Um, maybe you have beautiful surroundings. It doesn't really matter. Just get creative, like you said, and think about how you can take your audience kind of along for the ride. Yeah. Yeah. And all stories, just think about how you could break them up in a beginning, middle, end. And, and, right. and it's a great way to take that pressure off of yourself or feeling like you're always promoting. Cause if then you just become a storyteller, it kind of takes yeah. that away. Rebecca, yeah. I got a side question for you. I'm wondering what you would say. Do you think that social media for service-based businesses would tend to be more a first line of attack or a second line of attack. You were talking about like how one uh, checks you out or gets to know you. Do you think maybe they like go to Google first and then your website and then social media, or do you think they come via social media? Like, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that's a terrific question um, because yeah, you know, service-based businesses, what's happening a lot? Word of mouth. So they're talking to their friends and more than likely they're doing it on social media. They're going to Facebook and they're asking questions. Hey, local neighbors, you know, I need, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I need somebody to uh, watch my pups while I'm out of town. Who do you recommend? Um, here, you know, we use the neighborhood app a lot. Yeah. So we're having conversations with all of our neighbors in the surrounding area. So I would think about it from that perspective too, yeah. of how can you do a better, better job talking about what you do on social media so that you're top of mind, so that when people have those conversations, they immediately think of you. And if you're not sure if people know what you do, go around and ask, ask yeah. people, Hey, if you how had would to you explain, say what I do, yeah, <laughs> if you had to explain what I do, how yeah. would you do that? Mm -hmm. That's going to give you some great feedback, great insight. Um, but to that point, you need to make sure that people directly connected to you know what you do and how to hire you, more importantly, yeah. so that they can rec recommend you. So it's it's a balance, too, between how you're using um, – I'm having some trouble with my mic for some reason. <laughs> it's afternoon. okay. I'll, I'll jump in while you get that done. I, I think I, I love that point. Ask people what do I do? And yep. I think the other caveat to that, Rebecca, is are they saying you're a pet sitter, you're a dog walker, you're a poop scooper, or are they saying <laughs> things like she gives us peace of mind when we go away and just snuggles with our dogs all the time? Is it an emotional right. or is it a tactical that they're, that they're doing? And I think that's going to tell you if the message that you're sending or intending to send is actually being received or not. That is, um, that's something we've never talked about on this podcast. That's pretty exciting. I love that. Yeah, I know. It's, it, it's really, it, it can be interesting in insight because so often I think we, we think, well, I know what I do and I'm talking about it. <laughs> right, so people right. have to know what I yeah. do. Um, but in reality, they, they may not. And they're having all these conversations in these groups like we just discussed. Uh -huh. And you want to make sure that they know, hey, I'm actively seeking new clients. I'm actively looking for and spell out. That's another really important piece of this is spell out who your perfect perfect client is, you yeah. know, who is so it? Can I give you an example? Yes. Uh, I'm looking for... Um, a recently new mom who, whose firstborn child was four legs and now she doesn't have <laughs> enough time to walk him and feels really guilty that she yeah. can't dedicate as much time because she's taking care of the new baby. Do you know anyone like that? There you go. Yeah. That is well, the way you, you do it guys. <laughs> well, and I love that because it, just think about what it does to your brain. So mm -hmm. you go from saying, Hey, do you know anybody that wants to hire a pet sitter? I would immediately go, Hmm, you know, let me think about that. Yeah. I don't know. But when you get really hyper specific and you say, I really have a heart for small dog breeds. Do you know anybody that has a Yorkie or a Chihuahua that needs somebody? Yeah, to that's a great home? example. 
Yeah. So it's, it's just, it's planting that visual in people's minds too. And then you take that one step further and you're having those conversations on social media. So you're injecting that both onto your page or your group, but also in your personal profile where it doesn't feel spammy. It doesn't feel as if you're pushing your business. You're just talking about what you're passionate about, who you love, maybe sharing pictures of those animals that you're spending time with. And again, that all leads, you know, it's kind of all roads back to what your greater purpose is and what your business is all about. And you're training people to become that word of mouth extension for your business. I love it. We are almost out of time, but I want to ask you one last question. And um, because I bet like a lot of people are thinking like, oh yeah, Bella and Rebecca, that sounds great, but you don't know how busy I am. You don't understand. I don't have much time. So if you had to leave our listeners with one social media site that you think would drive the most amount of traffic in general, which one would you pick? Well, you know, Facebook's still the big boy on the block. Let's face it, it's uh, it's the one that most people feel comfortable with. And it's where we're having all of our personal conversations, which I think in the, in your industry is hypercritical. Yeah. Um, you you want to be able to tap into not just the personal conversations, but of course, business conversations as well. And that's why I say, I think a healthy mix of both balancing your personal profile as well as your business on Facebook is going to be extremely important in 2019 and beyond. People want to know that uh, you're a real human being. They want to know that you have a life outside of your nine to five mm -hmm. and they want to be able to connect with you on a more personal level. And we have the ability to do that uh, through our personal profiles. So to me, it's still Facebook um, yeah. because it is where people are talking, where they're having conversations, where you can listen and where you can really get involved and hit it from multiple different angles. And I know you're a huge fan, huge proponent of Facebook. Yeah, and Facebook. definitely. And then it goes to say when, you know, the CEO of Facebook is saying he wants to encourage more meaningful relationships um, yeah. as a, you know, keyword there. Um, yeah, I, I would totally agree with you. Yeah. Rebecca, yeah. where can people go to do what I like to call cyber stock? <laughs> <laughs> I love to it. Get as most uh, of your goodness as they can to follow you, learn more about you. You bet. So best place is RebeccaRadice.com. That's my website, my blog. You can find my podcast, Brand Authority Podcast there as well. And then any social network, you're just going to find me under my name. So at Rebecca Radice. Awesome. And that's R-E-B-E-K-A-H, you guys. Yeah, my parents had to make it difficult on me. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and we'll put that all in the show link and notes too. Um, so you guys, if you loved this episode, I would love to hear your feedback by either finding out where you found it posted on and writing a, a comment, tag myself, tag Rebecca with a K, um, or go ahead and leave a review on iTunes. We always love that too. And remember, when life gets you down, always keep jumping. <laughs>